I've just finished in the gym, sweating after a workout. The workout was from the Australian Strength Academy, by the way. Their content is on rugbyleagecoach.com.au. Um, and what better place to discuss uh, more correspondence I've had from strength and conditioners, um, particularly in England. Because of lockdown, they're hoping to come out of lockdown soon, so they're planning pre-season. One of the coaches sent me through a plan, and what I've offered to do with him is share my answer with everyone via this platform now so that everyone can benefit. Basically, he sent me a plan through for conditioning. He listened to what I said about work rest ratios and all that kind of thing. And then he also sent one for weights. So what I do as a head coach with my strength and conditioners is they plan something, then they run it by me because ultimately it's a rugby league program. It's not a strength and conditioning program. Strength and conditioning is a means to an end for rugby league. So um, I'm going to do exactly the same with this program. I won't name the person. It's up to them if they want to make their their name available to everyone and where they coach. But all I'll say is it's community game in England, right? So um, first of all, community game, key thing, less is more, right? So looking at the weights program that he sent through, I glanced at it and straight away I'm looking for the key exercises. I'm looking for things like squat. I'm looking for things like bench. I'm looking for something to balance the back out somewhat, so two or three exercises. And then if they are capable, I'm looking for deadlift. Again, deadlift is a very tricky one because if technique isn't good, you can cause a lot more problems. So even just light deadlifts or some variants of that to help get some leg drive and some power through the legs. The There really doesn't need to be that much more in the program. You can do things like box jumps where you generate some power jumping up onto a box. Um, but on top of that, you need to probably look at core strength. Now, I personally, as a coach, am huge on core strength. So if I have a one-hour gym session, 25 minutes of that will be dedicated to core strength, work on the Swiss ball, working on uh, techniques that cover everything between sort of lower chest and above the knee kind of thing um so hopefully that gives a couple of pointers there about the weights program have a look at your weights program if it's over two days so if it's three or four days you're probably asking too much of the community player bear in mind that community player might have late shifts might have family commitments may not feel great after the work they've done so always come up with something that's sustainable for the vast majority of your team something that's easy so something like bench squat, a couple of back exercises, maybe some bench jumps and some core a couple of times a week and then throw in some shoulder exercise, all that kind of thing. Come up with something that's sustainable that they can do when they're rushed for time, when they're not feeling great, they can knock it over in something like 45 minutes. And then if they come back to you and ask you for more, then you give them more. So that's the weight side of things. The conditioning side of things, the conditioner I'm talking about, he sent me, what he did, he listened to my work rest ratios and he came up with a program that was 90 seconds physical fitness work, 90 seconds active recovery, so walk or jog or something like that, and then 90 seconds skills. So if you add that all up, basically you've done three minutes work and 90 seconds active recovery. I actually think it's probably a tiny bit overcomplicated that. So if I'm the coach, if you're giving me time to do some skills in there too, actually work with your coach and say, right, can we do the conditioning at the same time as we're teaching some skills? So for example, let's say you are doing something like a 2v1 or a 3v2 as your skill, okay? Can you do something conditioning-wise in that to make sure it doubles up time-wise so that your 90 seconds is also uh, 180 seconds, three minutes, and it's skill and fitness at the same time, all right? So what I do with that 3v2, and I've done this plenty before, is make players get up and down off the ground at each end. So there's your three, there's your two. They run the 3v2. When they get there, down, up, turn back, go again, okay? If you look at my YouTube page and if you look at rugbyleaguecoach.com.ae you will actually see that particular drill on there so I think 
the feedback there is make your weights as game specific as possible think about what you do in a game rugby league you you palm you drive through your legs a lot of activities between below the chest and above the knee so make sure your weights reflect that you're not trying to develop them for the beach but then do other things to balance out the body shoulders back all that kind of thing and then secondly your conditioning when working with a coach bear in mind you're probably on limited time as it is the less is more the easier you can make it the better that will be and if you can combine with a coach to kill the skill and fitness issue together you're on to a winner if you can't what i would suggest you do so feedback to this this conditioner is do three minutes of work active recovery and then three minutes of skills active recovery okay i hope that helps aim higher not brisbane north if you're in brisbane starting on monday march the first if you watch this later as long as it's not too much later you can come on at any time you can come for one session if you want reach out um i hope you're well i know positive news coming out of england so there may be some rugby league there soon and particularly to the people i'm talking about uh, regard to this conditioning plan in australia we're all getting ready for our season the nrl is only a couple of weeks away and all the community and representative football and school football is all in process all the best